This is the Lego Icons Concord set. Created in collaboration with Airbus, it is, and I'm a little biased here, perhaps the most beautiful thing that Lego has ever done. It is also huge. At 2,083 pieces, it weighs over 6.6 .6 pounds or three kilograms. And when it's built, it's more than 40 inches or 100 centimeters long. We're going to build the set step by step and talk about some of the amazing features of the actual Concorde as well as the Concorde model itself. This model was sent to us by Lego so that we could build it and share it with you all. And we're going to pay that forward. Watch to the end of the video and check out the description below to find out how you can be entered to win this very set. Let's dive in. The set's 2,083 pieces come divided into 21 major steps, each with their own bag. The special piece for the classic front visor comes in its own small paper bag. The instruction manual is a hefty 206 pages long and features a short history of Concord and a note from the design team. As we get started building, let's talk about where Concord started. In the 1950s, both Britain and France were pursuing supersonic passenger transport independently. Britain with the BAC-223 and France with the Super Caravelle. By 1962, with cooperation agreements already reached between Sud Aviation and BAC and Bristol Sidley and the French engine maker Senecma, the French and British governments concluded a formal treaty authorizing the design and construction of Concorde. Construction of the first two prototypes, one each in France and the UK, began in 1965 and Concorde first flew on March 2, 1969. André Tocat piloted Concorde 001 out of Toulouse, while the first UK-built Concorde flew on the 9th of April. Concorde would go supersonic for the first time on October 1, 1969. Construction of the LEGO set starts in the middle of the aircraft with the assembly of the main wing area. Concorde needed a wing that could help the aircraft climb away from its departure airport and accelerate up to and maintain Mach 2 while crossing the ocean, before slowing down enough to join the normal traffic pattern into its destination airport. The Ogilville Delta wing, chosen for its efficiency at high speeds and maneuverability at low speeds, ensured that Concorde could cross the ocean but remain controllable during the critical phases of flight. The Delta Wing is able to produce lift at a much greater range of angles of attack compared to the wings of regular subsonic aircraft. Concorde could fly at a much greater angle of attack before entering a stall. At higher angles of attack, though, air vortices swirl across their wing, creating additional lift to keep Concorde flying. While the Delta Wing solved Concorde's largest problem, how to go supersonic and fly slow, it created others, which we'll talk about more when we build the nose.
At bag five, we get our first printed tile with the beginnings of the red sheet line that runs along the entirety of the fuselage. The livery for this Lego Concord set is that of the ones, mostly that of the ones used on the pre-production Concord aircraft. So you get a beautiful, beautiful paint job, but not one that was ever actually flown in passenger service. At this point, we've got the makings of a main landing gear assembly and the rough outline of the Delta Wing. With bag seven, we get our first look at the fuselage. The orange supports also come off and the build goes horizontal. If you've built any of the Lego train sets, these pieces should look pretty familiar. Bag 9 is more wing and fuselage, but we also get to a critical step, the clutch, which synchronizes the main landing gear and the nose landing gear when raising and lowering the gear.
Completing bag 11, we see the full shape of the delta wing. And as we open bag 12, we get to the cabin. On the LEGO model, Concorde features 12 seats and a 2-2 configuration, with two very large lavatories in the forward cabin. On the actual Concorde, there was seating for an average of 100 passengers, still in a 2-2 configuration. Concorde's landing gear had to be incredibly strong. With Concorde's high rotation speed and high landing speed, the landing gear took a lot of abuse. On Concorde, due to the height of the main landing gear, it actually moved upwards before retracting sideways into the fuselage. After finishing off the main fuselage, it's on to the Olympus 593 engines. Combined, the four turbojet engines and reheat produced 152,200 pounds of thrust at takeoff. Concorde only used reheat or afterburner for departure and then again for the transition to supersonic flight. The Olympus 593 engines were developed from the engines designed for the BAC TSR-2, the supersonic bomber being developed by Britain. Those engines were actually developed from the engine that powered the subsonic Avril Vulcan.
After the engines, it's time for the nose. Concorde's droop nose arose out of practical necessity. We talked about the design of the wing earlier, and that wing design, with its high angle of attack at takeoff and landing, would mean that pilots would have zero visibility during critical phases of flight. Concorde's solution was a movable nose that provided pilots with the necessary visibility of the runway during taxi, takeoff, and landing. On the real Concorde, the nose had four settings. Fully up, with the nose and visor creating a streamlined aircraft ready to travel at twice the speed of sound. Then a visor setting, which lowered the visor down, but didn't move the whole nose. Then five degrees down, which was the standard deflection for taxi and takeoff. And then a full 12 and a half degrees down, the standard nose position for landing. On the model, you'll notice that the nose only has two positions and the visor doesn't drop down. Though it's hard to see how they could have made that any more realistic at this scale. As we put the finishing touches on the model, it's worth noting the simplicity of Concorde's wings. Most jetliners have complicated wings with forward edge slats, spoilers, and trailing edge movable flaps. Concorde had none of that. At the rear of the wing, Concorde simply had six elevons to control the pitch and roll of the aircraft. Here it is finished and it is incredible the attention to detail that lego had when they designed this set is just really incredible uh, some of the things that they've done to give the concord its graceful shape in real life 
really translated into brick form, which I was pretty surprised by uh, how well they were able to do that. We also have a few interesting features because it's Lego. And so we'll start with the nose, which is just a simple hinge. So up and down, very cool. Uh, you have the independent rudders. You've got the top and bottom rudders independently controlled. You have your um, tail skid protection uh, for, for the high angle of attack on landing mostly and, and departure. And you have the elevons are independently controlled. So that's really cool. And then the gear is really cool as well. The gear is controlled by twisting the tail cone. So to raise the gear, you can twist it counterclockwise and you clean up the aircraft. We'll bring the nose up just for good measure. And then you can bring the nose down and turn the gear clockwise or turn the tail clockwise and you've got yourselves a landing gear. So it comes with this base as well. This is the, the final piece of the build and you've got a Concorde plaque that says designed and built in France and Great Britain by Sud Aviation and British Aircraft Corporation. First flight March 2nd, 1969, cruise speed Mach 2.02 .02, or 1,338 miles per hour, cruise altitude 60,000 feet, total maximum thrust 152,200 pounds. And then it mentions the Lego Group in Bill in Denmark, Airbus in Lyon, France. And this is Lego model number 10318. So a very cool stand, uh, very solidly built. The aircraft sits very well, both on its own landing gear, but also on the, um, on the stand quite easily. So once you put everything together, you can have a nice display stand. It's 40 inches or 100 centimeters. Uh, it weighs nearly seven pounds. Uh, so it's very, very solidly built. One of the other cool things, the mid fuselage pops off and reveals your cabin interior, including the lavatories. And then this just pops right back on. Okay, now for the important information you've been waiting for. How to enter to win one of these models. What you need to do is click the subscribe button just underneath the video and then head down into the comments and begin your comment with my favorite thing about Concord is. That's all you need to do. Subscribe and then begin your comment with my favorite thing about Concord is. You'll be all set to go. There's one entry per person and we'll do the drawing at the end of October so that you can check back and we'll notify the winner as soon as we've completed the drawing. So good luck to everyone and thank you so very much for watching along with us as we built the Concorde and explored some of its unique history. I'm Ian Pechnik with Flight Radar 24. Thanks so much for watching.